Good morning, and thank you for joining us at Police Headquarters today. I want to make a brief public statement that, given that we are expecting a busy weekend, with more than a dozen large-scale demonstrations, protests, and celebrations planned for Saturday and Sunday in the downtown core. The public will notice an increased police presence in and around demonst the demonstration areas, and we will be implementing both rolling and static road closures with the, uh, the objective of safely redirecting people and traffic. The Toronto Police Service always aims to ensure public safety by wor working to limit disruption in the city to its businesses and residents as much as possible as, demonstrations ex as demonstrators exercise the right to free speech peacefully. And this weekend will be no different in that regard. While you are encouraged to go about your business, we ask for your patience and we will work to safely manage large volumes of cars and people throughout the city. While the Toronto Police Service will always support peaceful demonstration, I want to be very clear that we will not tolerate any intimidation, harassment, or hate-motivated behaviour aimed at specific communities. We will be presenting our annual hate crime to, the report, to the, our board next week. As you will have noted, in recent media coverage, it shows an increase in hate-motivated occurrences in our city. While we know some of this increase in reporting is due to increased awareness, we also know that these crimes are sadly becoming more common, not only in our city, but across the globe, and we are committed to investigating every single one we are aware of. In recent days, I've had concerns brought to my attention in relation to the Al-Quds event planned for Saturday afternoon in the downtown core. Some have expressed concern about the potential for hate speech as well as the potential for confrontation between Al-Quds participants and those who are opposed to this event. We have received several complaints that hateful speech has been overheard at recent events. I think we can all agree that there is no place for this. I want to reassure those who have these concerns that, like all demonstrations, the Toronto Police Service will be visibly present and actively monitoring these events. As always, we respect people's charter rights and will facilitate lawful and peaceful protest. Lawful and peaceful protest. As I've stated here before, what we will not tolerate is civil disobedience, violence or hateful behaviour that crosses the line into criminality. While I have every hope that this will be a weekend of peaceful demonstration, I again want to be clear. Anyone whose behaviour crosses a line from lawful demonstration to criminality should expect to be arrested. This has been my message and will continue to be my message as our warm weather months bring more and more people into our downtown core on weekends. In addition to a visible frontline officer presence, we will also have officers from our dedicated hate crime unit on the ground to be able to immediately gather evidence to investigate any suspected hate crimes or hate speech or signage. The service will embed officers who speak different languages so they can record firsthand what is being said amongst the crowds and in speeches. And lastly, we will be adding more cameras in that area for the purpose of supporting any investigations that may be required after the event. We recognize that the al quds events has traditionally led to confrontation between groups with very di divergent views. The role of the Toronto Police Service is to maintain the peace. My caution with respect to any escalation in behaviour applies equally to everyone, regardless of their affiliation. Again, I want to reiterate that I look forward to a weekend of peaceful demonstration, and I recognize that the vast majority of the protests and demonstrations in our city are conducted responsibly and peacefully. I appeal to everyone heading downtown this weekend to remember that this is precisely why we live in one of the most diverse, respectful and safe cities in the world. Finally, I would like to thank the members of the Toronto Police Service who will be working this weekend and have done so so repeatedly in difficult times during the pandemic to ensure our city is safe for everyone to go about their lives. Thank you. And I have a few minutes to, to take some questions. Thank you, Chief Raymer. We will begin questions first for those that are on WebEx, followed by those on the floor. When you are called on, please unmute your mic at this time only. You may ask one question and one follow-up. Once you've asked your question, you will be muted again. Thank you. 
Those on the floor, please use the mic on the right. We'll begin with JP Nadeau, French CBC. Go ahead with your one question and one follow-up. Good morning, uh, Chief Framer. My question is simple, is uh, what do you expect? Do you expect something uh, major like in Ottawa uh, this winter? Uh, no, we're not anticipating the same events in Ottawa. This is what we're anticipating is frankly quite often what we see in the uh, in the uh, during the weekends through the summer months here. This weekend we're going to have about 14 different demonstrations, some smaller, some larger, and uh, we expect to see this uh, as we usually do through the summer. And so, um, you know, we're, we're really trying to send out a message so we can have a safe, peaceful. Uh, uh, you know, these these type of events occurring through the rest of the summer that are, are going to just occur in a judicious way, safe, safe, safely and peacefully for everyone. And my follow-up is easy. In terms of number, how many people do you expect? Um, well, there's, there, for the 14 demonstrations, uh, we're... Uh, uh, you know, we're anticipating various numbers. Uh, some will be, like I say, very small. Some can uh, number in the hundreds. So uh, we'll have to see how the, uh, the weekend plays out. Thank you, JP. Next, we'll take Scott Laurie from the Toronto Sun. Chief, thank you very much. Um, just a question about Ottawa. Um, I imagine that you've had some discussion with uh, the police service in Ottawa. Do you have any indication that the rolling uh, thunder demonstration might actually also be taking place here? Um, Scott, what I can tell you is that uh, all the police partners through the province uh, are in communication, our intelligence partners as well on, on the events that are happening throughout the province and indeed throughout the country. And we have no indication of anything here in Toronto, uh, but that is uh, always being monitored. A follow-up question, uh, you mentioned embedded uh, officers who speak um, various languages. How much has that made a difference in the past? Is that a, a uh, investigative tool that you've tapped into before? Yes, we have, and we're, we're doing it more and more because we, we, have, we have that ability within mm -hmm. the organization with our officers speaking so many different languages. And uh, so it, it's, it's a great way for us to actually understand the nuances or what's going on, something that uh, many of our officers might not otherwise uh, be aware of uh, because they don't understand everything that's going on and uh, the, having the officers uh, with that cultural background and understanding that language gives us a much better um, idea of exactly what's happening in, in some of these events and maybe enable us to prevent something uh, from occurring or prevent some violence or, or um, you know anything that would uh, that, we, we, that wouldn't be occurring as, as well as might be expected. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Ellen Besner, CJN Daily. Go ahead with your one Hi, question. Thank you very, very much. Yes, thanks. It's Canadian Jewish News. Um, given that uh, in previous years of the demonstration, I'm speaking specifically about the Al-Quds, has had signs that have uh, basically violated Section 318, Section 319 of the Criminal Code, incitement to and vilification of Jews. Um, why are you letting it happen now? Why, why, why prevent, why not prevent the same thing that they did before? Well, uh, frankly, the, the Charter allows freedom of expression and uh, an ability to demonstrate. And, and so we will facilitate those events. However, you know, we are monitoring this and freedom exp of expression, to your point, has a limit. And we'd like to, we have so many different communities and uh, so many different lived experiences. And we would like to see all of our communities have some empathy and understanding for what other people have experienced and, and act in an appropriate manner. Having said that, we are in consultation with Crown Attorneys and we are uh, consulting with them on all of these events. We'll be recording everything that happens. And if there is something that uh, is determined to cross the line into criminality, we will proceed uh, in terms of prosecution. Can I ask a follow-up? Because you, you mentioned, Chief, uh, that you have your new report that's going to be discussed on hate crimes. And in terms of religious hate crimes, the Jewish community of Toronto is the number one target of religious hate crimes in the last year. So given the two uh, facts, free speech 
and uh, the fact that the community has uh, been attacked, how do you reassure the Jewish community that they can trust the Toronto police when these things are allowed to happen again and again? Well, unfortunately, uh, it, you know, it were, and I shouldn't say unfortunately, I'll just repeat again, the, the, the community has the ability to lawfully and peace, peacefully demonstrate and as, as per the Charter, and we will try to facilitate a safe and peaceful protest if we witness, and that's why we take the extra steps to be prepared to monitor what's going on at any event, any event that goes on within the city in any community. If it, there's going to be inappropriate or offensive language or signage that uh, meets a threshold of criminality, we will take action. Thank you, Ellen. Momen Kreshi, City News 680. Go ahead with your one question and one follow-up. Yes, thank you for taking my question. Chief, um, when the, uh, a few months ago when there was uh, protests in Ottawa and there was offshoot protests here, Toronto Police took uh, what was kind of unprecedented action to hold news conferences to talk about preparations and planning for those protests. And that was, uh, you know, sort of against the normal what you usually have done. And now you're doing it again. I just wanted to know, what is it specifically about this weekend's multiple protests that you saw that made you want to take this action and hold this news conference today ahead of those protests? Like you said, they happened kind of all summer long. Yeah. And actually, well, the, this really in advance of what we anticipate to be a very uh, busy summer is, is part of the reasons that I, I'm speaking here today. And it's really to provide some assurance to the community that, and, and to make them aware of some of the disruptions how hard we're going to work to minimize that disruption, about how we're going to facilitate peaceful and, and lawful demonstration, but just to also, you know, let people know as well that, you know, there's there's a level of behavior that is required here by everyone, and it's to what we want to do is to have a safe uh, and, and peaceful demonstration that doesn't undermine any community or uh, create fear or or, or foment hate. And, and, and that is, that's not acceptable, and we don't want to see any of that occurring during the summer in this community. And just specifically, you mentioned uh, one, one specific protest there, uh, and that uh, in the past there has been, I don't know what the exact word you used was, whether it was clashes or tension or whatever. I just want to know, are there any other groups involved in those protests that you uh, are concerned about in terms of the, the potential for uh, any sort of clashes? Well, you know, it's it's you know it, that's a good question, and the, and the reality is is that you may have a demonstration for a cause or a concern that people have in the community, and there's other elements that may have no political affiliation or whatever else that will insert themselves into that demonstration, and and quite often we've seen that some of these individuals will make the event much worse than it might otherwise have been, and and that's that's uh, that's another thing that we're we're often seeing. So uh, that's why the greater police presence, that's why the additional cameras that we're going to put, put in place, that's why the language speakers, and hopefully we can uh, encourage people not to conduct themselves in that way. Thank you. Sean O'Shea from Global, go ahead with your one question and one follow-up. Hi, Chief Raymer. Uh, technical question about uh, whether there will be certain areas of the city off limits. Queen's Park, Nathan Phillips Square, are you going to have areas of the city as you did back uh, in the winter time when there were other protests, there will be sort of no-go zones? No, uh, that, that's not anticipated for here. I mean, of course, you're referring to the trucker con convoy. That was a, that was a very dish, a very different situation than what we're talking about here today, so no. Uh, there will be events scattered in different areas, primarily in the downtown core, and uh, we will be facilitating uh, peaceful movement uh, of those demonstrators. And the follow-up is at that point about facilitating movement. There was a lot of criticism in Toronto and Ottawa over the winter about police using a velvet glove to escort people and to, for all intents and purposes in the view of, of some people, helping these people demonstrate even when those demonstrations went awry. Um, how concerned are you about the public perception that the police are actually facilitating some of these demonstrations that so many people feel is, are, are not right? Well, actually, I don't share the same concern. Uh, facilitating a demonstration is, is what we do. Uh, and that's our responsibility because the Charter permits that demonstration to occur. So our goal is to make sure that that demonstration occurs as peacefully as possible without any violence, without uh, the minimal dis disruption that we can create. And that's why uh, quite often they want to march through the city yeah. and we will, we will facilitate that. 
because we would rather quickly facilitate that and get traffic moving again than, than have to be in a position where perhaps there's much more com confrontation and violence. Even when there aren't permits or are there permits for all these demonstrations? Uh, uh, there are people will, uh, sometimes they do apply for permit, but a permit doesn't necessarily mean that the demonstration can't take place. So uh, we're obligated again and the Charter permits it. And in this society, it's, we're, we're glad that the Charter permits people to, for free expression. And so we're going to support that. And that's, that's our goal, to make sure that that's done, that's done peacefully. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Ryan from CP24, go ahead. Chief, good morning, sir. We saw during the trucker convoy how your officers effectively uh, kept the peace by allowing protesters or just maintaining an area while protesters were able to lawfully protest and demonstrate. How important is it for the police to react if criminal offenses are committed? What type of decision process goes into that? Well, I, well there's a number of things that we consider and, and is, there, is there going to be arrests immediately? Are there going to be arrests post-arrest? What is the safest way to execute those arrests? Um, uh, are we going to, are they the type of things that we need to consult with the Crown Attorney to receive direction to permit us to conduct certain arrests and, and charges and investigations. All of those things are elements that, you know, the incident commander on the ground will evaluate in terms of making a decision, in terms of calling in additional resources. Um, uh, to make, but the goal ultimately, Steve, is always to do it in the most safe and effective manner that we can because one of the things we don't want, and it's seldom do you see it in this city and, and quite often nor anywhere else in the country, and I think we saw it exemplified in a spectacular way with the events in Ottawa is that we tried to do things in a fashion where people are not injured, uh, there's a minimal number of arrests, and we encourage people to, to demonstrate, but 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 don't engage in illegal activity or that's going to be hurtful to anybody else. And that's a great segue into my, my follow-up. When it comes to large demonstrations, discretion is the best tool that you as a command officer can have because if you do act quickly for something what may be perceived as minor, that could escalate into something that as a police, you do not want to see it. Oh, very much so. And, and I, I have to tell you, I, I commend our officers. Uh, they do a very good job of, of uh, engaging with leaders in these protesters, they, uh, uh, to facilitate what they're doing, to make sure that the, the, the demonstration will proceed again in a, in a peaceful manner, uh, that the people are reasonable, and they, they state their case that they want to do, and uh, we permit them to do that, and then, and then move on. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Walker, CTV, go ahead with your question. Hi, Chief. I just want to follow up on a question my colleague just asked a few moments ago. Um, based on what we saw with the protests earlier in February, and I know you're not anticipating it to be that size, but are we expecting any of the same tactics police used before with, like, the large buses and that as part of uh, these uh, temporary road closures? Um, uh, you know, I, I, specifically, I would say generally no. There may be some cases if we have a larger crowd that we may use vehicles to block a roadway, but that's more as a for a safety issue. Uh, and so that those people that are obstructing the roadway are somewhat protected from any type of ve vehicular movement. So that's quite often sometimes why you will see that. I mean, the truck convoy was very different. We were trying to secure an area and not permit entry of vehicles. That was very, very different. You could protest lawfully on foot, uh, as we often do, but you weren't going to shut down roadways. So that, that was, it was very different why we, we set up that, uh, that blockade as opposed to what you'll see this weekend. And do you anticipate this only being a weekend of protests? Have you received any insight that there may be something else rolling through, like what's happening in Ottawa this weekend, that may be prolonged beyond Saturday, Sunday? No, we're not anticipating any of that based on all our conversations around the province with our partners. We are not anticipating the Toronto. As I, as I indicated earlier, this is really an, an announcement that speaks to the months ahead. It's not just this weekend. This, I think this weekend is just indicative of many of the weekends that we're going to see over the, over the next number of months. And we're just, I'm just trying to have people think about what, 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 what do we want to be in this city? What are we trying to accomplish? Okay, we're a very diverse city with uh, so many different community groups. Let's have some empathy and compassion for what, what the concerns that people have, but let's let them do it peacefully and then let's not uh, try to disrupt it and have counter protests and all this kind of thing. But also those demonstrations, let's also need to take into account concerns of other communities as well and, and do it in a reasonable way. Thank you.
And our last question goes to Arthur Pressey from City TV. Yeah, it's very simple. I'm just wondering if there's any areas of the city that maybe you're concerned about that the general public who are not involved in any of the protests should maybe just avoid. Well, no, I, I just, what I, 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 I would say avoid nothing, uh, quite frankly. I said what I'm saying, be, be aware though. If you're coming downtown, there's going to be times when suddenly you're going to see, up oh, the roads just got blocked off because now a number of demonstrates. So you might be, you might be subject to some delays. But our, 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 the city is open. We want the, the people to do whatever they choose to do and conduct their business. But just be aware that all of these events are going on in the city and you may be subject to some delay. Thank you. Okay. That concludes today's conference. Thank you for joining us. Okay, terrific. Thanks very much.